Last we left off, our adventures headed to the Crimson Nightmare, a shady tavern full of brigands, thugs, and bandits, where they hoped to meet the Queen of Thieves. The group was ushered into the basement by Lurch, another brother of the deceased Merch, and found themselves in a cramped hallway confronted by an image of the Queen of Thieves. The first phase of negotiations were rather simple according to the Queen. Pass her test, and the bounty on Arvin's head would be removed. The group then delved into a maze of puzzles and traps, full of sick and twisted humor of love, romance, betrayal, and heartache. Eventually the group made their way through the maze, and ended up in another hallway. This time, the hallway was lined with statues that always seemed to be watching, and at the end of the hallway was the Queen of Thieves in person. She offered to parley with the group, and welcomed them to her humble abode. The Queen of Thieves acted like a benevolent mother to Arvin. That is, until you cut through the bullshit and realized her words were laced with threats and, alter and ulterior motives. It seemed as though the Queen of Thieves knew exactly what Arvin had come to Steeplight for, as it seemed her network of informants was vast and all-encompassing. As Arvin stated his wishes for the boys of the orphanage to be freed, the Queen of Thieves offered a proposal. Participate in her gladiatorial arena, and 19 of the 20 orphans would be freed. She demanded that Wincuff, the current leader of the orphanage, must stay. There always needed to be a fatherly figure at the orphanage. There was some hesitation, but the group agreed to participate in her fight pit, as Gurch would put it. The Queen of Thieves had her guards escort the group out of the Thieves' Guild, and the adventurers were given time to prepare themselves for the adventure ahead. This is where we begin tonight's session. It is a late Thursday night, and the event is Saturday night. How would you all like to spend your downtime and prepare for the fight pit? I think Tyrkseen is going to look at some spells, isn't that right? Uh, this is something I'm going to do in the morning. I have to do it after a long rest. Before going to bed, we'll cast Goodberry. And pass them... Actually, we haven't had a very taxing day today. I would like to... see if I could find out some information, whether it be from the orphans or random bars uh, walking around to see if anybody has seen some of these events in the recent past okay um, do you want to start in the society of the obsidian hunt or go back to the crimson nightmare or just some local Close by, um, we'll see if anybody's drinking here. If so, I'll start here, and then if not, I'll try to stick close by. Okay. And make just a generic charisma check. In this tavern... It seems that a lot of the individuals don't really go out into the town very often. Generally, they leave town via the most direct uh, route possible to do society business. You know, hunt animals, trophies, go on adventures, maybe grab some more supplies or head to another chapter of the obsidian hunt but it seems that not really anybody here knows about it 
Um, does anybody want to head out with Arvin, or what are you all doing while Arvin goes and heads to another tavern? Um, I would actually like to be in one of these taverns, but with Zendu, if he's there at least. Yeah, Zendu is definitely here. It's pretty late at night, though. He seems like he is very far into his alcohol for the night. That's perfect, but um, we can resolve Arvin's thing first. That'll be a separate thing. Okay. Panoply, what are you doing? Uh, Panoply would just be buying arrows, doing the good berries, and then probably staying in. She's not like a out of the town kind of girl. Okay. And Turkseen, you're Sorry. studying. Yeah, this is. I think this is the first night since um, he had his big dream and was up for the rest of the night, right? Correct. Yeah, he's definitely not going anywhere. Okay. Arvin. All right back. Uh, Sorry. Roll another charisma check. Okay, and I'll probably just head out to whatever's close by, whether bar, market. Okay. Make an investigation check also with advantage. That was disadvantage. So, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's <a> terrible <laughs> rolling there. You head through one of the local taverns that's on the, the high street. Uh, kind of a rowdy place. Feels very much like an old western tavern. You seem to immediately get along with everybody. But other than somebody saying that they heard from their cousin that his best friend's uncle once fought in the fight pit and uh, didn't make it out. All right. Not quite an enough information to be helpful, so... Uh... It seems that while people have heard heard of the fight pit that the generic population really doesn't know anything about it. Got it. Like just a lot of hearsay. Um as long as I can give myself enough time for eight hours of sleep. Um uh, probably want to head to the Crimson Tavern. Okay. Are you trying to obtain more information there? Yes. All right. Since that tavern is more... It's not that there's people more involved with the actual event. Yes. Um, basically, the patrons there, you get the sense, are all some sort of employee of a thieves' guild, be it the Queen's Way for one of the other lesser thieves' guilds in town. The approach is a little different here. They will talk. I think the goal is more to see if anybody might become inebriated or open up, become a little more loose, share a little bit more information than they probably would otherwise. Very, yep, very doable. Um, it seems, though, you'd have to get involved in a gambling game. All right. I would love to win some money. All right. They are basically playing some game of cards. And essentially, they, they tell you that there's a five gold buy-in. Right. I'm in. 
Make a charisma check. Okay. You start playing cards in one of the gentlemen who is currently dealing the hand seems a little maybe a little bit more higher up in the packing order of a thieves guild and as you continue playing he seems to not really notice how you're steering the conversation into an angle about information of the fight pit and he mentions something about dignitaries from all over the world come here and it's the queen of thieves main source of income and he mentions that she has a weird sick sense of humor where she'll essentially reenact fights of old or um, sort of tropey encounters of old, such as the great orc invasions of the northern continent, the slave pits of the Mignaean Domina, and for the finale, she usually has a bizarre or exotic monster that will be the ultimate test for the fighters in the fight pit. And usually she has four different groups of fighters involved, and they don't fight each other, it's just sort of a um, elimination tier as they go through the, the various tiers of combat versus her menagerie of creatures and monsters and that the winner wins a prize but nobody ever really knows what that prize is they never see money exchanged so he thinks that it must be something that the queen of thieves negotiates under the table with the players Fantastic. Roll 3d6. All right. You win the table. 20 gold. All right. Nice doing business with you. All right. Well, with that information head back. Anything uh, you want to talk to Zendu about over there, Kaim? Uh, yeah. Um. So first, I will be buying Zendu pretty much two or three rounds of a beer for the both of us and just starting up a conversation with him say um hey old man have you ever thought about teaching sparring or um educating people of what you've been through he gulps down another flagon of mead stares at you hard I used to do that I don't know these old bones they uh don't quite work like they used to I don't know maybe if somebody was interested well, it makes you think somebody wouldn't be interested. You seen this town? It's full of... I mean, to put it lightly, it's full of lowlifes. 
Oh, I, I agree, but I mean, you don't have to stay here, you know? There's so many other towns you could be at and, I don't know, open up a, a dojo or um, open up a school, something. <laughs> dojo, I like you, kid. Uh, I mean, I haven't been here this entire time. I've gone from town to town. The Society of the Obsidian Hunt keeps me uh, engaged. Like to go on a monster hunt every now and then. Just, uh. I don't know. I think it's uh, nearing the time where I put up the blade and. Maybe instead of a dojo, a, a bakery. Seems like a easier life. I can respect that. Have you been hunting recently? We've just picked up some tags and been um, hunting stuff for the Yasudin hunt. No, not recently. About last year, I think, was the last hunt I went on. Just, uh... I don't know, I think I'm just losing the passion. How about I help you spark that passion back up? You know, sometime this weekend we have a fight pit that we're going to be participating in. I could use a few pointers. <laughs> a fight pit. Oh, to be young again. I mean, what kind of pointers do you need, kid? Uh, you got a blade, you uh, run it through them, and, well, make sure that they don't stand back up. I don't know, for a legendary warrior such as yourself, I, I think you're holding back some information. You, you have a wealth of knowledge that could possibly help me. Yeah, maybe, I suppose so. But, uh, definitely can't tonight. I don't even know if I could walk over there. That's all right. Well, how about this? Come watch the fight. See how we do. And afterwards, you decide if you think I need pointers or your, your, uh, expertise. All right, I'll figure out how to get invited into one of these um, fight pits. <laughs> oh, boy, I thought they were just a joke, but I guess they're real. Oh, they are real. And I plan on being on top. Well, that's the spirit. I mean, gulps down another flagon. And Kime will, um... Oh, hey. You mentioned the, uh, Forge of Aurelia the other day, right? Have you been there before? If I said Aurelia, I meant the Forge of Adara. Which is the goddess of fire. And Adara. Um, he... Stares into his empty tankard. Never been there, but met some individuals that say they were from there. Um, family of Fire Genasi that live in a um, night, dark hollow, um, like black night hollow. hollow? Yeah, Night Hollow. That's it. <laughs> Night we were Hollow. just there. Oh, well, there's, uh, there's some, I mean, d damn good armorers, uh, but the, the family, they said they're, like, from the Plain of Fire and the Forge of Adara, and I don't know, it sounded pretty grim. 
Wow, I don't remember seeing any Genasi there. We saw doors. They're pretty awesome, by the way. Yeah, good miners. Uh, they, they like own an uh, armor smith or something. Well, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be heading that direction anytime soon. But I'll definitely keep that in mind. And uh, kind of will take last swig of um, of beer and call it a night. Alrighty. If the rest of you have nothing else to do, you are more than welcome to take a long rest for the night. I don't know if it will work, but I did want to cast Detect Thoughts on my spellbook. I don't think it'll work, but I'm personally still trying anything I can. Okay. I have to read Detect Thoughts. It says you can read the thoughts of certain creatures as long as the creature has an intelligence of at least three. Uh, but I don't... It doesn't really say other than that. I don't know if it's considered a creature. I don't think so, but I don't know how it works when you start getting sentient magic items. Make an arcana check. Okay. You sit on a chair in your room with your book on the table and you leave it open and you cast detect thoughts you just sort of sit there for a minute meditating or not a minute but before you cast the spell you just sort of sit there meditating and as you cast the spell you sort of concentrate on the book. You're more just reading the room. And you do get something, but it is a chaotic, garbled mess of thoughts that just rapidly accelerate through your mind, kind of like your vision. The thoughts are garbled and it's almost as if there are many thoughts all in one and you have a really hard time picking out a singular thought amongst them. But does feel like your spell book is thinking. Well, I think they'll just keep at that until exhaustion overtakes him and he needs to just rest, knowing he didn't sleep much the night before. All right, sounds good. Sir, I have a weird question. Is there anything preventing me from casting good berries twice and having two handfuls? Spell slots. Okay, I'm gonna cast it twice before bed. Okay. Uh, how long do good berries last? Twenty-four hours. Okay. Or, yeah. Yeah, 24 hours or a day. So they'll be fresh until bedtime tomorrow, essentially. Alrighty. So you all prepare for your night's rest. You can take a long rest, wake up in the morning. You have a whole 
day and mo most of the next day to do whatever you wish. So is there anything that you all plan to accomplish in these days leading up to the fight pit? Panoply doesn't like the environment here, but she is going to see if she can if there's a, a way to get on the roof of the Hunter's Guild and if she can if there seems to be much activity on the rooftops. Okay. There is a roof um, access for the Hunter's Guild. Is the second story is sort of the lodging, and then there's a balcony up top. Make a perception check. Okay. You can make out movement on certain rooftops as if there are individuals or guards or something that do look down upon the streets. But that's basically what you what you can make out. Is there animal life at night at all? Very little. It is mostly ravens. May I have a conversation with a raven? I speak with animals. Sure. I will ply the raven with bits of, um, I'll say some like venison from downstairs in the stew. Okay. Do you live around here? Make an animal handling check. Okay, I'm using speak with animals, by the way. It's a once a day thing. Oh my. <laughs> He's like a vegetarian raven, isn't he? The first raven appears takes the food and as you speak with it it flutters away scared and you can hear it repeating um cause y are, are you doing this at night? I mean like yeah in the dusk and at night are you making yourself visible or are you just talking yeah, to a raven from the I'm darkness? I am just talking to a raven from the darkness Okay, so as you talk to the raven from the darkness, it freaks out, and in raven, or animal, speak with animals communication, you hear, the darkness talks, the darkness talks, the darkness talks! Yeah, they just says shit and sits down on the roof for a while. Do you want to come out of the darkness? Is there light up here? I mean, it's the roof. Uh, I mean, there's probably like a torch somewhere. I'll probably wait and not try to talk to the raven again. I'll pick something else if it's available. Or maybe I'll bring a torch, like, because we had, you said this day and most of the next day. Yeah. Uh. So you'll try again the next night? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. What does the rest of the group want to do on the first day? I uh, wanted to share the information that I learned with everybody. And pick everybody's brains to find out what sort of famous battles they might know from history. Or something that might possibly happen. It's everybody's history with wars and battles. Particularly Kaim. Battle that okay. might happen again? Well, the information that I learned is that it's possible that the fight that we're going to do is going to be a reenactment of a famous event from the past. A famous battle. So just seeing what you 
know of. All right, Kaim, Turksian, and Panoply. If you want to make history checks, you can. I'm going to ask the darkness. Would I have advantage because of the Battle of Kasoria? Mm, not advantage, but... Probably a disadvantage from growing up on a different continent. <laughs> I mean, those are famous somewhere. Yeah, still probably. Oh! No, they're not. <laughs> no, not at all. Negative one? Oh my gosh. Damn, dude. That's a fucking zero. Kaim is thinking. Okay, that's good. <laughs> and while Kaim is thinking, Panoply mentions something. When you say, like, orcs, um, that triggers something in Panoply's mind. Um, her grandma used to tell her stories of this massive orc invasion by an orc named Grognag the Unscarred, and how he raised an army so large that he swept across the continent and that the Valerian Empire had to raise its armies and protect the cities nearby from being pillaged and destroyed. And that when they entered his castle or fortress, that it was a scene of horror as Grognag the Unscarred was not just an orc, but he was some sort of demonic vassal in an orc body. That's what Panoply knows. Um, Turxian, when he hears about the slave pits of the McNean Domina, he knows that some of the more famu famous gladiators of those pits were sort of revelers of destruction of a house called Rakdos and that they were almost performer-like in their destructive revelry and that they had like <sighs> giants but chained giants and then satyrs and performers who would blow fire um, and strange things like that and that those fighters weren't the slaves that fought but were actually professional performers and they really didn't care if they died in the gladiatorial arenas they actually thought that it was sort of an honorable way to die. Alright, now my... Shoot, do I need to roll? Am I familiar with any... Sure, you can roll. Medals? Uh, this was history. Yep. Okay, not too familiar. Uh, you decide to tell a tale of... Um, well, you're not quite sure, but you tell a tale. <laughs> and you turn it into a song. And when you're done with the song, Kaim stops thinking and says, Well, um, Zendu told me a story of my grandfather, and that's about it. Oh, thanks, Kaim. I really um, had to think about that one. <laughs> so, so I guess while we're all here, my best guess of what we're going to come up against is going to be not just our group, but maybe multiple other groups all fighting for their own prize as well. Do we have to kill them and the thing we're fighting? 
I suppose that's what we don't know. But what we do know is that we have to obviously survive. So finding out whether our strategy is going to be only fighting the enemy that is presented to us, which could come in the form of waves of orcs from some historic battle we've heard about or something different, slave pits of whatever historical fights we heard about, or if we should strategically try to take out one group slowly at a time. I don't know what the best way to go about this would be. Do you think you can convince some of them to fight with us? I don't think there's going to be much time for talking. From the information that I gleaned, it's going to be very hectic. And then he made it sound that you would be in like differing tiers or stages. And gotcha. it was sort of like a, a last group standing after the battles. Right. So it could be a giant melee, it could be everybody going against the same people all separately, like a bracket format. Um, but after we survive all of that, if we survive all of that, more than likely there's going to be one grand final boss that we would have to defeat at the end. Um, so hold resources. Kind of. I mean, we do need to make sure we get that far. Is this all happening in one day? Are we going to have time to rest and catch our breath? I think we need to assume that's not going to happen. Oh boy, okay. That's a stab enough. Got it. But, obviously, this is all just conjecture. So, battle strategy, Kaim, I don't know if this is more the same where it's the rest of us spread out, back out, you take the front. If we fight one enemy at a time, try to do a lot of AoE damage, I don't know. Uh, but that being said, I don't think I have anything else I was looking for around the town other than making sure I am stocked up on uh, crossbow bolts. Hey, I got arrows already. Got all my equipment, spells. How everybody has a health potion? Uh, At least one. Are we allowed to use them? I, I don't I mean no. I'm not gonna ask permission. I'm just gonna take it if I need it. Are we allowed to use weapons? Uh, <laughs> that would be really shitty. I guess we don't know anything, do we? Can we wear and, armor? And who knows, maybe each event has a different restriction or challenge or we don't know anything. That was all the information I could find out. Make sure you're sober, Kaim. Speaking of which, Kaim would be sparring the day before. Probably late at night, so he can spar with uh, Panoply. I kick your ass. Is that so? Yep. You want to put words to action and... Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. I'm assuming we're not using weapons. And we can, but I'm just going to stay away from you and shoot you. As if you could hit me at all. True. Anyway, it's a waste of arrows. And, like, if you ding your sword, like, it's not a good time, you know? We should just not use weapons. That's alright. I know how to take a hit. Do you? I mean, I've gotten hit before. Not always going to be there to protect you. I hope you know that. Yeah, because you're too stupid. You're going to get all of us killed, actually. I'm. If it's at night, I'll probably be okay.
I don't know if that information helped Terexian, by the way, for making any decisions on what spells to have available. Uh, he probably already had a pretty good idea of what he was bringing. But he is going to buy that 100 gold worth of components. Okay. Fireballs, that's what he's bringing. Um, they do have a small selection of potions, nothing crazy, though. Also, a reminder, what's the rules on potions? Is it a bonus action or an action? It's an action. Okay. Action, but it's max healing, right? Correct. Okay. What does that mean? Like, max possible roll? Yeah, so yeah. instead of 2B, 2d4 plus 2 for a, a regular healing potion, it's just plus 10. Alright. What about greater? 44 plus 4, so 20. Okay. Thank you. And they have three potion of healings and one greater available. 50 gold for the regulars and 200 for the greater. Uh, um, I have two regulars already. I am fully stocked. Man. All right. This peaceful music. Oof. With that, Canopy, are you staying in the darkness tonight when you talk with the bird? I'll bring a goddamn torch up. <laughs> okay. I learned. What would you like to ask the raven as it comes down and eats the meat and doesn't fly away because the darkness isn't talking to it? Okay, casting my uh, speak with animals. Hey, can you uh, see me? Yep. Do you fly over this whole city? Every day. So what's like the the biggest monster you've seen? Have you seen like any really like new looking monsters around town? Like in a cage? Yeah. Um I saw a big monster with big mouth and stubby hands. Bigger than me? Yeah. Did have fur? Nope. Did have horns? Uh, big teeth. F some feathers. Not a bird. You're oh. you're a nice bird. That's great plumage you have. I don't know what that word means. Um. I saw another thing that just had lots of eyeballs. Oh, cool. Is that in a cage, too? Uh, yeah. yeah. But they, like, had to put things over the eyeballs. Cool. See, so like, do you just eat meat or do you like other things? Ooh, shiny. Sh shiny things, huh? And uh, flies towards something shiny and flies away. I will leave it. I will look through my coins and leave it the shiniest silver piece I have. A new raven comes and grabs the shiny silver okay. piece. Okay, well, you know, I tried. And then I go and tell my party, okay, uh, I talked to a bird and the bird so I said it, it saw a couple things in cages and birds are not really reliable because they're not super smart so I don't know how long ago this was but said it saw a monster with big teeth and some feathers that was not a bird it was bigger than me in a cage and it said it saw another one with lots of eyeballs that they had to cover up I, I'm not sure I know what those are maybe you guys do Erickson, you have any blind spell? Um, 
I don't. Ah, oh, that would be useful. Kim is still stuck on the, uh, you talk to a raven thing. When, can, when have you ever been able to talk to ravens before? I talk to my spider all the time, dumbass. Like, I thought spiders you could just ravens. Yeah, I thought you could just speak to spiders. I don't know. I don't know. I like them better. They don't. They're not as judgy, you know. Where Where are we right now? By the way, are we just in the common room, or are we in somebody's room? I'd say wherever you want to be. I'd say the common room, maybe tucked away a little bit more from people. Um, I mean, I can... I have the spell here for blindness. I, I could learn it now and have it ready for tomorrow. Might be useful, but we're also basing this information off of what a bird said. A bird said. said. I... So, I mean, if it's going to take away from something that you find more valuable, then don't worry about it. Um, based on the description she gave, would I have any clue if any of those ring a bell? Or if that spell would be useful to spend a hundred gold on? Make just a intelligence check. What if it shoots lasers? What if it shoots lasers? Do you have an anti-laser spell? Hmm. The only creature you know that has lots of eyes would be a beholder. And you've read about it. And that shoots lasers. Um, big mouth, stubby hands... Maybe some feathers, not a bird. Kind of sounds like one of the monsters that Herbert was talking about that they have a tag for. Like a dinosaur. Uh, stubby oh, hands. stubby hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be inappropriate to find a tag for it? I... <laughs> I mean, if there's tears, I'm just going to say, like, we may not be able to trophy take at the time. Also, I don't know if they have the same tags here as Herbert has. They did mention a T-Rex here. That would be so terrifying, guys. Oh, my goodness. It's amazing. Dinosaur spells? Never seen one before. Okay. Well, again, these are all options if we also, walk over and oh sorry go ahead no, no no you're good if we walk over and inquire about that particular tag is it available here and how much is it <laughs> queen's gonna let us drag it out you might be able to take some teeth or something um to snatch one of his stubby hands are you, like, how are you inquiring about it? Are you just inquiring if they have a tag? I'm gonna walk up in my awkward way and just like, Hey, um, Herbert told us about this dinosaur thing that he was looking for. And I was like, do you, do you know what I'm talking about? It's like, um, it's got stubby hands, some feathers. Well, uh, that would be a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I think he was looking for a particular one, maybe. King of Feathers. Oh, yeah, maybe that's it. Do you have a tag for that here? Is that, um... Is that a thing? How much is it? I believe we do. Let's look at, uh, I think it's a 50 gold tag. Party fun. I bring this. Let me, let me check with my party. We might, I don't know. 
this town, like in town, is not the greatest town, but maybe go off and hunt something fun, you know? And I go return to my party and then leave the hippo hanging and then go back if they agree. Kind of so it's 50 gold. The King of Feathers is the name of the, the Tyrannosaurus. Do you want to like bank on it being the one? I mean, it could have been in the cage here for all we know. Well, no, he wouldn't still have a tag. We still have the tag available in case something happens in the future, so I'm all about it. I mean, how reliable is your source? It's a bird. It's a bird, dude. Very reliable. Yes. Ooh. Quote the raven, nevermore. I hope it's... I hope there's no nevermore to this. Do you guys want to spend 50 gold on a tag? That for something we might fight? Yeah. And who knows, maybe if we don't see it here, we'll see it another time. We'll go hunting for it. Ask, um, a step setting hunt if they know where we could find one. Listen, what else are we going to spend money on? Components for spells? Hustling orphans out of town? Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, Panoply will collect the money from Turkson if he has the party fund and go slap it down on the counter. Yes, please. That tag we were talking about. All right. He gives you a, a certifiable tag for the King of Feathers. It's in my back pouch pocket on the backpack. Okay, guys. If I die, you can take it. Well, don't die. She's just being dramatic. Should we write letters home or something? Like, just in case? Is that a thing? I mean, on losing? I'm not planning on losing. I'm just not always stupidly confident. The queen seems like a wonderful lady. I'm sure she would pass a message along to your family. Alrighty. So you all decide on that. You get your information from Panoply. Any final uh, final preparations? Orvin is content. Is it like an evening performance? It is. I will stay up late and cast good very late and sleep in to try and get the angle on the timing all right casting it twice so in the morning i want everybody to have five good berries we have them just like chilling in case we need to use them yeah like just the last until the clock chimes i don't know 11. berries in my pockets Pocket berries. Pocket berries. That's why I do mushrooms, you see, so they don't stain your clothing. Noted. Well, with that, you all head toward the Crimson Nightmare and prepare for Fight Club. Uh, Lurch seems exceptionally happy today good for him like a kid in a candy store as you are welcomed into the thieves guild um, you don't talk with the queen of thieves but you speak with fenagru who goes over some basic rules with as he puts it, such fine gentlemen and lady. I stare at him. The first rule is that once you enter the fight pit, you can't leave the fight pit until the round is over. 
If you leave, then you forfeit. No questions asked. The second rule is... Well, once you're in the fight pit, there are no rules except for rule number one. If we leave the fight pit, are we free to leave with our lives? I would say theoretically yes, but I wouldn't put it past the Queen of Thieves to be uh, rather upset if you ruin her party. Thank you. As far as that goes, well, it is quite a fun, entertaining ordeal. When it's not your turn, there's a special area for you to wait and watch the other teams. We will randomize who goes first, and, well, the two victors of the first round will compete. And then those victors of the second round, well, there will only be one, will then compete in the final grand finale. And if there is still a team remaining after that, you shall be dubbed the winner and your deal with the Queen of Thieves will be completed. If you lose, then, well, you lose. That won't happen. I like your spirit. Well, I don't like when you have your blade to my throat and you're lying to me, but I like your spirit. Thanks. Anywho, if you so wish, there are... Well, the Thieves Guild has some unscrupulous individuals that will try to sell you some... I think as they would it, insurance, if you so please. I think they uh, offer the ability to return you to life if you so much as die in the fight pit. Is that... Sure, sounds like potion. a scam. Well, it is, uh... They offer you half price up front, um... If you need it, but there are no refunds. Do we inquire about the price with them, or do you know? Oh, you would have to talk to them. I am not a salesperson myself. I just like to inform people of the... Well... How should I put it? The shady tactics that others might use upon the contestants in the fat pit. That's very gracious of you to inform us. I am a dignified man. Is there any um, does the audience have the ability to affect the people in the fight pit? No, they um they do bet money, but affecting I mean, the... somebody going to cast a spell on us from out there, you know? No, sure. that is okay. um, not allowed, and the punishment is severe, as that can sway the odds in favor of somebody in a high-stakes gambling game. We take that very seriously here. Does the group sound like that's something they're familiar with? Back to the resurrection thing? Is that maybe like a potion that would bring someone back from unconsciousness? I mean, if you could... Like churches do that kind of stuff, I think. Somewhat. Sounds like a scam. Our grandma <laughs> could do it, but I don't think she ever like went around charging money for it. Like the way, the way it kind uh, of thinks. Out of character, Kaim, weren't you... Didn't your buddy you've been talking with talk to you about resurrection spells last session 
think he did actually. Interesting. Tried to resurrect my my grandfather, I think. Yeah, but they're just they working out of diamonds. Right. So you would at least be familiar with it. Even if you have no idea how it works. Tell us, Cam. I always assumed it was a spell. That Time's required got things to spend his money on. Yeah, that required a diamond or something. I don't know. Number a really creepy individual walks up to you. Do you guys want death ward? What's a death ward? It's a spell. You uh nearly die, and it stops you from dying. Oh, how much does it cost? Oh, why, uh, it's just the uh, small price of 500 gold. <laughs> does that affect all four of us? No, just one. Do we have to choose who to put it on? Yeah. Oh my god, 500 gold. Another guy comes up to you. In case of death, I can put one of these diamonds away for you and cast it on you and bring you back from the dead. A meager 300 gold. No refunds, though. So if you don't die, well, win-win! <laughs> one guy's selling something that keeps someone from dying. Presumably, like, just not bleeding out. And then someone can bring someone back to life if they die. Those are so two different salesmen selling two different things. Oh yeah, guys, is it? Do they sound good? Really. I'm kind of nervous. Out of, out of character. Uh, no, that's a lot of gold. Plus, like, they probably pick you over and then resurrect you. No, there, I mean, the rest of us would still be alive. I, that's assuming a lot. Like, if we, what if we barely take something down and someone just... Oh, man, I don't know. Tyrkstein, what do you think? Do they... You, you said they have resurrection spells. What if we just we just pay full price if we don't pay up front I think the two options are the 500 gold for death ward or 300 gold for a resurrection or some variation of that I mean the resurrection yeah <laughs> I don't plan on dying so I'm gonna hard pass wow So many potions, I would hate to be dead and not be able to use one. Alright, Arvin's too tight. He ain't spending no money. I don't know about the rest of you, though. Yeah, I think Turkson is going to pass as well. How about 100 gold for that resurrection? Nope, too late. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine them actually haggling. Oh my. Okay, this looks cool. Sure does. Doesn't look very forgiving either. I like the, uh, the audience ringing in the arena. Oh my god, how many Gurches are there? There's only one Gurch, but there is also Lurch and Birch. Oh my god, they just multiply. <laughs> There's always more. I like to think that he has another brother called Merch, who's just talking t-shirts in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, we killed him. <laughs> All right, you enter the fight pit with three other groups. 
Uh, one group looks like a band of half-orcs. A mix of male and female. They kind of look like they have war paint on them in the four various elements um, earth, wind, water, and fire. There is a, another group of just generic looking humans. That is until you look at their armor and it looks very, very pristine, shiny, and new. Where's that raven when you need him? And the last group is a hodgepodge group of a goliath, a dwarf, a gnome, and a, um, a, a half-elf. And they look more kind of like you guys. Like a ragtag group with um, some wear and tear. I like them. The Queen of Thieves introduces the audience to the four groups here. As she mentions that your group is led by well, a local hero, Arvin the Jolly and his band of misfits. And the half-orcs come from a plane between planes, a world of water, a faraway place. The... Let's see, the, the band of ragtags mentions that they come from somewhere in the north, the cold, dark wastelands close to the abyss, and the group of hoity-toity, brand new shiny armored folk, while they come from the nation of Prospero itself. As you look upon the audience, you see members from far and wide civilizations. In fact, Panoply and Kaim, you make out the colors of the Valerian Empire in the audience. Oh, and Turxian, you see the robes of the nation of Prospero. There are many, many members, and you can see them passing gold between essentially middlemen in the audience. Over to the south just looks like a, a bunch of Thieves Guild members that are here to watch the spectacle. As you can hear from the audience, Gurch, Lurch, and Birch all chanting, Fight Pit! Fight Pit! Fight Pit! And the section to the north is where you all wait while the other groups fight. The Queen of Thieves says that round one will represent the various wars that have or are still being waged across the world, such as the orc invasion by the monster Grognag the Unscarred, the hobgoblin Siege of the Nation of Valeria. The forever fight on the walls to the south by the Nation of Prospero against the unseen enemy. And in the Underdark, the war between Drow more drow. Who would like to roll a d4 to see what order you all fight in? Me. Panoply. Uh, 
four, four. Hey, let's go. All right, you all fight last. Excellent. Good roll. As the arena is vacated, except for a group of shiny new men in armor from the nation of Prospero, the Queen of Thieves smirks and says, Oh, yes, the members of the nation of Prospero who fight so diligently upon the wall to protect the rest of the world from whatever horrors you've created. And with that, the four members create a shield wall in the center, and the gate below her opens, and a horde of gibbering madness descends upon the four soldiers. You are not quite sure what these creatures are. They look alien or demonic in creation, and there are many of them. The soldiers, well, they look like they've never fought in a battle before. Kind of looks like daddy bought them some new shiny armor. They strike a few of the creatures down, but it's quite obvious that they are completely overwhelmed. One by one they fall, and unfortunately the screams of terror from the four individuals goes for a little longer than you'd hope. And then there's silence. You do notice that every creature has a collar around its neck, and as soon as the battle is over, the collar emanates something, and the creatures go docile. Handlers come out and grab the creatures, pull the bodies out, and the next round begins. Than, than us. The next round is a battle between the half orcs and the as the Queen of Thieves put it puts it the army of darkness. However, as she spoke of Drow before it's more machines painted as if they were creatures of the Underdark. Trying to make them look like drow. And it seems to be some sort of cat and mouse game where the drow are attempting to enslave the half-orcs. And as you notice the... Fake drow war machines have hand crossbows that fire darts into the half orcs, and one by one the half orcs are put into a slumber by some sort of poison. But not before the last half orc kills all but one of the fake drow war machines. But as he goes to slay the last war machine, he takes two steps forward and tumbles to the ground as the poison finally takes over his body. Looking on the battlefield, it looks like only one of the members is deceased, and they merely just drag the three other undeceased ones back through a different gate, but then take the deceased body through main gate where they have taken all of the other corpses. As the battle is over, the war machines deactivate and are taken away. 
The third group, a group that looks very much like you, except for the races, ends up fighting a horde of hobgoblins. The hobgoblins are very well-trained soldiers, but this group seems particularly adept and through combined tactics of spellcasters, ranged combatants, and the melee combatants, they end up taking apart the hobgoblin troop one by one. They do suffer some wounds in kind, but they come out of that battle victorious. As that battle ends, you can hear some cheers in the crowd as the betters obtain their winnings from the middlemen, while other betters in the crowd look like they are a little sad. Kaim, you do notice that there is a familiar dragonborn in the crowd, just as he said he would try to do. Nice. You made it. With that, it is your turn to enter the fight pit. Have we noticed the enemies always come in from the main gate? Yes. Okay. And have we perceived anything about the victorious group, like any of the individuals? That might be notable. In what sense? Uh, did they, like, their spellcasters, did it have a buck? Like, Turkson has a book, or did it uh, seem to use spells that we haven't seen before? Um, no book. It seems like there was a barbarian of sorts, a sorcerer, maybe, a cleric, and then a maybe a, a ranger. It seemed in the other group. Do we get a chance to move around where we need to? Yes, you may position yourselves where you wish. Is, is there any darkness? Sorry. <laughs> I think that's it what is asking. very well lit. Damn it! The Queen of Thieves gives Panoply a smirk. Uh, we could at least do like a diamond formation with Kaim up front. Will you allow me to have my echo pre summoned or no? Yeah. Like Panoply, maybe opposite side. Do you, uh, just the lighting sources, like I would have looked at that during previous battles? Is it like I could put that out or affect it, or is it like, wow, that's way up high and looks not affectable? They're up high and they're huge braziers. Mm hmm. Wah, wah. Also, okay. is there anything blocking us from... Like, does there appear to be a barrier between us and the crowd? Yes. They are on a higher tier, and there are these big giant spikes, too. Okay. One thing you've noticed through this entire time is the Queen of Thieves uses multiple accents while talking. The previous southern drawl that she used from you has turned into a more majestic speech, but that at times, sometimes it becomes more somber and quiet. But she presents the final group and their final fight. She speaks of the battles that two of the forefathers fought against the hordes of orcs. And as she says this, the portcullis below her opens. And out pours the orc horde. <laughs> that sound effect was awesome. And that's where we're going to take a break. Oh my god. 
good. Need another drink. Okay, back in a minute.
As the orcs charge out of the gate, I would like everybody to roll for initiative. Oh boy. Oh boy. The horn! Let's go. It's asking for initiative on my echo. Should I just roll and you cancel it? Yeah. All right, Panoply, you're first as usual. Wow, I didn't even beat her with the bow is close. Okay. Is there a fellow in back of that group who looks like different? a caster? Sure does. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of you know, he's got some beads and not very armory and stuff. You know, I don't know. Yep. Is he obscured by the other orcs? He is, so he'll have a plus two to his AC. I'm gonna try and shoot his ass anyway. Get him! A 
27 surpasses his plus two to AC. <laughs> That's a little sad, but... And then, for good measure, I'd like to try to ambush him. Surprise, motherfucker! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I would, I would like to use my second attack to shoot him again. Alright. Get him. Oh, well. Whoa. Oof, that barely misses because he's in the back. And then I'm going to go back behind this pillar. And I'm done All now. Right. Arvin, it is your turn. Perfect. I'm going to cast slow. Yeah, I hit the wizard uh, on the stance as well. I, now, if I make a big box, that only hits other creatures, not anybody who enters it from my end, right? Correct. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, boom. Um. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. Stop rolling all good. One succeeded. Okay, and then Tirxian is going to get magical inspiration. Just remember, you can that numbers and it rolled as a bonus to the hit points regained or damage dealt. Ooh, that slows good. Yeah. That hit five of the six, too. Wow, even with your rolls? Must be low wisdom. Uh, plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, plus zero. Okay. Time? Alright, that's your turn. Uh, yeah, magic inspiration on Tirxian, did that work? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Okay, I don't see the icon. Um, you have yeah. to use your bardic, and then he can just choose to use it as magical. Okay. It's technically, he he can use it either way, is how it's worded. Oh, perfect. Okay, so if you use that hit I or that bardic inspiration, and it fails, you get to keep it. FYI, it's so always use it. If there's a question. All right. A orc will move a whopping 15. And let's see. Can't use reactions, either an action or a bonus action, not both. Speed is halved. Um, at the end of its turn, it can make another wisdom saving throw. Fail, fail, fail. That's a fail. What's your DC? Like, uh, 16. Okay. 16. Alright, next orc. Raw. And it's going to try. Nope. The one orc that isn't slowed. And then it is going to use its bonus action to be aggressive. To move again. And then great axe kind. saving his crit for when it's more important. You can use action or bonus action, but not both. Oh, okay. So those ones will actually be further up as they will use their bonus action and not an action to be aggressive. B. 
aggressive. B, B. Is that just like extra movement? Yep. Aggressive allows them to move up to its speed toward a hostile creature that it can see. Gotcha. Turxian, it is your turn. There's really only one spell to use against a horde, right? Fast friends. <laughs> <laughs> Speak to animals. Oh, I was way off. Whoa. Holy. Oh, look at all the dice. That's a terrible uh, roll. I haven't been getting good rolls with it recently. The last few haven't been great. Dexy little fuckers, aren't they? Except for that guy. Whoops. Holy. What is going on? Dead, 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 dead. Looks what? a little sad. Well, Arvin, the bad news is four orcs are no longer slowed. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible news. I'm glad you rolled that high of a number. As Turxian launches a fireball. Um, interestingly, the orc leader looks like he took no damage from fire. Good to know. Um, and thinking he probably just got his attention. Is uh, gonna go hide behind this pillar and end his turn. <laughs> All right. Run What's Gilfie doing? Um. Let's see. How far? Uh, I always forget what her speed is. One second. Sixty. I think. Sixty feet. Uh. So yeah, she'll come here and she'll harass the big guy, giving panoply advantage and that all right bugger off is that on the leader yes okay. yep i'm assuming she's going up yeah all right Oof. the orc fiendish orc well, he's uh, slowed, so he's going to move, but then bonus action. But he can't take an action if he bonus actions, so... That's his uh, really awesome turn. It's time! Saving throw as well, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kime's gonna look... Like dead in this guy's eyes and attack twice he also has minus two ac so go for it hey that'll miss even with the minus two Time. um that'll actually hit Oh, okay. Because of, of the minus two. Uh, I don't have the window anymore, so I'm just gonna attack one more time. There we go. And, um... That is all Kaiba can do. Um, he's gonna move the Echo... Uh, can he take reactions with slow? Nope. Okay. Um. I, can he, I guess it's um difficult terrain to go through, so about twenty-five feet here, and then I have my turn. All right, his AC is updated. Um. Alright, the Orc Eye of Grumsh, who is really badly hurt. Uh, 
is going to... Move for just a little and cast spiritual weapon. Um, right next to Kaim, and it will whack you. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> Alright, Panoply, your turn. Since that owl so nicely fluttered around that guy, I will. And I'm going to... Try, let's try to hit him first. And I am going to add favored foe. So I'm going to do a situational bonus on it and then expend the slot. Okay. And then I'm going to shoot him again. Arrows seem to do normal damage. Yes. And health features only on the first attack, correct? Correct. That only hits because of slow. <sighs> Boy, that wizard's awesome. I shot. Oh. I mean, it's something. It's something. And I'm going to just, you know, move back a little bit more. That's good. First time on each turn. Okay, so it's not every attack with favorite foe. No, it's not like Hunter's Mark. It's just a, like a, I don't know, sneak attack. All right, Arvin, it is your turn. We're gonna use vicious mockery on the guy in the back. <clears throat> oh no! <laughs> or or or. Mocked him to death. That's right. Kind of brain aneurysm. And we're also going to throw on one Bardic Inspiration to our favorite tank of the group. And Oh, there's a vicious mockery effect. Yeah. Nice. Wait. Oh, like the icon on there? Yeah. Cool. Uh, I will stay where I am, and my turn is done. Orc. Raw. Use your shield. Tries to great axe Kaim. Oh. Turxian's turn. Oh, wait, it gets to wisdom save. Uh, wisdom save. Oh. 16. And now it's Turkson's turn. Does this fiendish orc seem to be wearing armor made out of metal? Yes. Sweet. Uh, Turkson is going to hold his action until Gilfie's turn. Okay. It's Gilfie's turn. <laughs> Uh, Gilfi is going to swoop down and with her claws 
and grab at the closest piece of metal she can. And Kirksian is going to cast a shocking grasp through Gilfie's claws. Watch that little owl zap that giant orc. Mm hmm. That's awesome. And then she's gonna fly away. All right. Uh, I just realized slow. Da, 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 da. It can't make more than one melee attack on its turn. <laughs> It tries to swing twice at Kaim, but it's so slow. Oh, it hits though. So slow that I don't see it coming. Like when you swing too fast at a pitch coming in. And it's going to make its wisdom saving throw. There we go. Oh, it passed. It's clobbering time. Kaim, your turn. Oh man, Kaim's a little scared, so he's gonna finish this one guy off ASAP. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Get him. And for the second attack, he's gonna turn and hit the main guy. Gonna stand his ground and end his turn. Right. Canopy is going to continue to shoot the big one who's left. Yay! 25 just barely hits. Uh, okay, favorite foe doesn't put a condition on it, so I will add the 1d4. Oh, he's looking scruffy. I'm gonna shoot him again. Hmm, but I went the way of Kaim and whiffed. Whizzes over his head. Arvin, your turn. Right. As is per usual, we're gonna throw a vicious mockery at it. Fail, 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 fail. Yeah. Anything else on your turn? Uh, I am also going to. Bardic Inspiration stay on 10 minutes. Um, yeah, just 10. Alright, I'm gonna hold. That's it. Okay. Turxian, your turn. Let the Vicious Mockery go away. How damage does he look? Ah, uh, he's bloodied. Doesn't look like he's on death's door, though. Okay, um... Person's gonna do the same thing. I have Gilfie shock the crap out of him. Oh, okay, yep. That's a big shock. 
almost as much as my fireball at the cantrip. Oh, and that'll end both of their turns. All right, Fiendish Orc. Um, the first attack is at disadvantage from Vicious Mockery. Ooh! Oh! Still Ooh. hits, though. The second attack is not cut. at disadvantage. But swings wild. Um, does he have anything else? Nope. Kaim, it is your turn. Mm. He's looking rough around the edges. Kaim sees that. He's gonna attack. So how do you want to do this? Uh, okay. So for that hit, the echo is going to come up from behind the orc, like just above him. And Kaim's going to bonus action swap and strike down at him from the temple and slash down. As you do this, there's a moment of silence in the crowd. And then as the blade drives through the skull, splitting it in twain, you just hear roars erupting from the crowd, especially from Lurch Gurch and um, Birch. In fact, you, you might even hear from the stands like a... Get him, lad! Good on you, kind! silent. With that, you all have made it on to the second round. Time for some pocket berries, Kaim. Yeah, I was thinking, um... Oh, what can I do? I'm gonna eat some good berries. And I have five. Are we left on the arena floor for this? Or is there like a drinks that are mission at Gladiatorial Arena? Um, you don't have much time between rounds. Maybe like five minutes Not for a short okay. rest. Um, just take the All right, I'll use a potion. Um, smaller ones, like this one. Who wants to roll a D2 to determine what order you go fight in? Panoply. Uh, Turkson also while we have a minute is going to use his pearl of power add another four hit points Kaim. Yeah. I don't know why it rolled it should have been a ten nice good coin flip alrighty I'll put you all in the crowd what does that pearl do I get back the one spell slot that I used. Ooh. A Queen of Thieves shows the next group. Which is the Goliath, Dwarf, Gnome, and Half-Elf, a well-rounded group. And she mentions how round two 
as an homage to the gladiatorial pits of the Magnaean Domina and of the performers of House Rakdos. And you watch the fight go back and forth, but you get to see some abilities of these creatures. The big giant seems to have the ability to hurl a rock if it needs to, but mainly it has this giant chain that can reach quite far. And when it hits a target, it grapples them. The... Um, well... Rather interesting looking individual. I'll show you all their portraits. This is the blood fray giant. How long is long on the chains? I mean, all men think it's long, but... I mean, <laughs> maybe about 20 feet. Okay, it's long. This individual here seems to be a spellcaster and have similar spells to Arvin. Like him. I think orange looks better than you. And the final individual is what you presume to be the performer and has the ability to spew flame but otherwise has a bladed chain that looks like it reaches the same distance as a spear. How's that other group doing? So the battle is hard fought. One of the group members actually goes down, but then you see some sort of death ward activate on him, and he doesn't die. Whoa. They do defeat the Rakdos performers, but they look really bloodied and beat up after this round. Um, the cleric has used tons of healing spells to keep the group stable, but they are looking winded. Queen of Thieves has you all enter the pit, and you presume that you will fight another group of basically the exact same performers. So you can set yourselves up as you wish. Flip sides, panoply. Uh, you want to move well, closer, Kaim, or you or the Echo? How close? Uh, <laughs> at least one spot ahead of me. And then Tyrkseen, as long as you're in range to do whatever you need to do. And then probably Gilfie could be as close as possible, but, you know, like, high up in the air. Alright. As you all prepare, the portcullis opens. Oh, no. Oh, God. The Rakdos performers come through the gate. And I would like you all to roll for initiative. I think I got your shadow in there again. I rolled low, so I'm gonna... Refresh real quick, because I still have the orcs on my screen. Man, what the fuck? Oh, your rolls are shit. You need to give some coffee to that echo. Damn. Did you roll a one and a two? Yeah, the two is the one that counted. Uh, Gonna get beat up while. Oh yeah, at least you're up front. Uh, I was trying to look at my bard stuff. I thought I had like an anti-charm 
ability at level you six. Do. Yeah, I think yeah, it's the performance one though. Like I have to use an action to. Yeah. Okay. Just in case. Are you loaded back in Turkscene? You, I think you cut out there. I am. Okay, cool. All right. As usual, Panoply, you're first. Oh boy, oh boy. Get him. Okay, so I'm going to pick off the guy on my side. We'll just start with what we got. I would like to hunters mark him, please. And then, you know, shoot him. Make a count. Oh, oh. Okay. Who are you going for? Barely hits. Try to take out just whomever I can at first. Rakdos performer. Ooh. Ooh. I don't, I don't like showy people, okay, Arvin? Noted. And then I will do... Where's Dread Ambush? Do some of that. Oh, well. Let's go. And I will. I can't really see the other guy behind because there's a fat yeah, guy in the way. Yeah, I'm going to see no on that one. I'm going to attack the large in charge dude. You have to slide and shoot under his leg. I, oh, God. But in my moment of indecision, it kind of is bad. Shot like goes up into the crowd near Fenagru, but <laughs> as it as it nears him, this blue barrier on the archway appears, and your arrow cracks against it. Hmm, good to know. And then I'm going to hide my little face behind this pillar. I'm done. Blood free giant. Just going to shift down and swing at Kaim with a big giant chain. Oh, he did. Oh. And Kaim, you are grappled and restrained in the chain. Arvin, it is your turn. I have a spell that I want to use that is going to be a cone. I just want to try to get somewhere where I can hit both of these guys. I don't know if it's possible. The echo might take How big is the cone? Uh, 30 foot. 30 foot cone? Like, do I have to be down there? What's the spell? Uh, here. Uh, self 30 foot cone. So the cone originates from you. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If, if I moved into position, would it have to be down south? Um, I, don't know how wide it, I don't know how wide it goes. Like if I move here, would it be wide enough to hit both of them? I can't really tell unless I use the spell. I th think if you win, or could I try? Let me here? do without consume just to see. Yeah. Uh, how do you rotate? 
rotate it? I think with your scroll wheel. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't even have to move, really. Okay, cool. Oh. Sorry, one sec. I crashed. Nope. Arvin died. It's... <laughs> no! It just said reload application. Okay. I am going to take one step to my left. I'm going to cast that. The cone will hit the them both and then I'm gonna do uh inspiration if I can't reach Tirxian I'm gonna do it on Kaim do you know what the distance is on inspiration uh probably 60 foot but I'll look here in a minute loading now if, if all you do is move one step over You'll have enough movement to get in range of Turkscene. Okay. Because you can move one step over, then cast, then continue your movement. Okay, so we'll move one step. We're going to cast Fear. Rotate. So it hits both of them. I don't think the Echo can be scared anyway. No, it can't. It's not a creature. Um, do I get any? Nope, no. Nope. Should be a wisdom, I think. What about the lampooner? Uh, nope, not him either. No, oh, lampooner's not afraid. He ain't afraid of no ghost. <laughs> However, the blood fury giant sure is. He is frightened. Creature must take the dash action. Well, that's terrible. Okay. <laughs> yes, move away, and if he can't see me, then he can roll a wisdom saving throw. But I'm very much in the open. Oh, jeez. Okay. That's no bueno. Alright, the Lampooner! What is he gonna do? He is going to cast Crown of Madness on Arvin. How could you, my brother? A twisted crown of jagged iron appears on your head. Madness glows in your eyes. When it gets to your turn, things will happen. Turkscene, it is your turn. Um, Turkscene is going to move up 30 feet. Um, and then he is going to take out a shaving of licorice root and cast haste on Kaim. Kaim's very happy right now. And that's his... That, that's his turn. Gilfie's turn. Gilfie is going to dive bomb the, the giants, giving advantage to Kaim, and then just fly back and up and end her turn. And Kaim, it is your turn. So, since I'm restrained, that's disadvantage on attacks. That's just a straight roll now, since I have Gilfie's help. Correct. For the first one. Okay. Um, I'm going to have the Echo move 15 feet forward. And I'm going to have Kaim attack the big guy. 
straight. Uh, can it use this after creature adjacent? No. Oh, it hits? Okay. Barely hits. And for my second hit, I'm gonna have... Do I have to make both hits from the same character, or can I split them? You can split them. Okay, so I'm gonna have the Echo attack the Lampooner. It. Ah, uh, shit. That's gonna hit the big guy. Um... I had both of them targeted, sorry. That's all right. One for each way. Okay. Nope. Erickson, come back. It's 13th for to And that was from your echo? From my echo on the Lampooner. He succeeds concentration. Um, as the echo hits the Lampooner, the blood free giant lashes out with her furious defense reaction. And makes a chain attack against your echo, but it's at disadvantage because he's frightened. And it misses the echo. Okay. Um. Uh -oh. Second. Is this a bonus action? Does haste give you a, an it, additional attack? Oh, it does actually. You're right. It does. Yeah, you're right. Yep. That lampooner. And I can only take that with Kaim, or I can do it on Echo as well. Uh, that's a really good question. I would say just Kaim, honestly. I'll make it easy on you. I'll hit the big guy with uh, Kaim. Uh, it's a disadvantage. One second. It's screwing us all up. Still ahead. Good job. And then I'm gonna bonus action second wind. And that'll end this turn. Did you heal? Oh, a nice. Um, and for clarification, you cannot use the haste attack with your echo, because the echo is strictly the attack action. Okay. And I will let it go this turn, but it does say you make this choice for each attack. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, never mind. We did it right there. Okay, cool. Um, Panoply, your turn. Okay, Panoply's gonna cross right in front of Turxian. Refocus Hunter's Mark on the new target, and she's gonna pick the Lampooner, because she could see something happening to Arvin. Get him. Oh, I do look good in this crown. I hate showing people. And I'm going to... <laughs> shoot my new target. Yeah. I guess that ends concentration on that. And then... Well, with my second attack, I guess I'll shoot that big one. But I miss, and I will continue over here, and I'm done. By the way, should I have done saves for the uh, the grapple and the restraint? 
Uh, no, those are in action to escape. Okay. But if you teleport, you can... That's... It says I need to expend 15 movement to do that. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you can't do it then. Because you don't have 15 movement to expend when you're grappled and restrained. Right. Do we even um, know what he, this guy's afraid of? Is it a spider? The blood-free giant runs into the corner. Uh, Kaim, you can attack him because he has to flee because of fear. I'm grapple, so does that go with him? I'm going to say that because his chain has a 20-foot range, that only when you get 20 feet away from him. Either way, I would have hit him with my echo. It gets sentinel as well. Yeah. Ah, oh, sentinel. Um, that's interesting. I guess I'll move it back. It doesn't up get I... an attack action this turn because that's uses action to run away. Get him. But with sentinel, I stop his movement. Yep, so he's there. Um, all frightened. If the creature <laughs> ends its turn in a location where it doesn't have line of sight, a creature can make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> so it can't break it? Oh god, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Arvin, it's your turn. Wow, that spells better than I thought. Yeah, I'm just gonna shoot him. And my turn is done. Turksy in your turn. Well, let's hope this guy isn't very smart. Turkskin's going to cast Asha's Mind Whip on the giant. I can't roll well to save my life, can I? Wow. Ooh! Wow. It's a moment of smartness in his fear. The oh, nat right. 20 turns into an 18. <laughs> Still getting up. I'm a smarter than someone. Tarsian will move back away. Gilfie's turn. Um, Same thing. Gilfie's going to dive bomb the giant and cancel okay. out one of the disadvantages for Kaim. Time your turn. Uh, question. Gilfie has to do that for a creature. Would she be able to do that for the Echo? gonna move the echo back this way yeah help says you can lend your aid to another creature and the echo is not a creature hopefully this blocks him from getting to arvin um it, it so i'm gonna have the echo attack twice and then kaim is gonna use the haste of attack for himself okay Yay, Echo. Let's go! Plus uh, one attack. Oh, 
on the turntables for Kaim. Kaki at Bard. <laughs> Straight attack. Oh my goodness. All gracious. the nat 20s. Why? And then, you Looking know what? Nah, nah. <laughs> I'm not sure if we're going to have another fight after this. Uh, he'll end his turn here. Panoply. Panoply bonus action moves that hunter's mark. And it's going to pass across your end again. Taking a solid old shot. How do you want to do this? I he's holding the chain, I'm assuming, and one of his yep. big old meaty hands, and I want to clip those wrist sinews, and his hand flies off. Kaim is freed. <laughs> nice. The the frightened giant, who is dragging, trying to drag the chain behind him as he tries to run away. Um, the arrow just severs its wrist, and Kaim, you feel the chains go loose around you as there is a big old meaty paw on the ground next to you. Big, dead, giant. Nice shot. Cheers are up! Except Lurch, Gurch, and Birch go, That wasn't that fair. Giant was stupid. I look right at them. Very pointedly. I club. Fine. Do I have time to use a healing spell? Yeah. Is All it right. like another five minute intermission kind of thing? Yep. I'm gonna drag the corpses and shit. Uh, yep. I will need... use another healing potion. So Do you need another that. healing potion? Do you want mine? Uh. How I many mean, do you have? I. Uh, I have two, actually. I think. I think that's what my inventory says. I mean, I have more spells that I could use if you don't want to use one of those. They're pretty expensive. Yeah, but you use your spells to fight, too, you know? And I, it's like, I can't necessarily throw him a healing potion in combat. That's kind of weird. Is it a regular healing potion? Yeah. But I do have two, so you want this one? Might just, as well just it. one. Just one. Yes. Can you transfer that out of my thing? Give it to him somehow. Can, can I use it on him? Can I do that? Can you target yeah, him? I yeah. think you can target him. Okay, and cool. Use it. I'm, do you want these five mushrooms also? Uh, let's see my health one second. I could. I just need another six if possible. I'll give you, I'll give you keep one Turxian and I'll give him two. Just in case. That works. Block it berries. Thank you, guys. All right, somebody roll a D2. Panoply, you're on fire. Two for two. Yeah. Do it again. Definitely not kind. You're determined to see me fail, aren't you? No. Three for three. Yes. I don't know how this is going to help. We can watch them all die. All right, let's see if this works. How big is this token going to be? Well, that didn't work. Meaty monsters, meaty, meaty monsters. King of Feathers! Yes! <laughs> well, that's what the first group fights. Yeah. Oh, damn it! Oh, damn it. I suppose we could creep out after and like, get to that corpse pile. Oh, I got so excited. So the other group enters the arena and the Queen of Thieves just looks upon them and says 
It's time for you to meet my precious. And a giant roar echoes through the arena as the King of Feathers enters. There is a look of terror upon the faces of those individuals. Suffice to say, after their second round where they were not doing too well, a King of Feathers rips into the group, absolutely decimating them and completely devouring the gnome. Oh god. Oh. Is he shaking? Uh, there's not enough of the gnome to shake. He does shake the Goliath, though, and a leg goes flying across the arena. Oh no. It is a bloodbath. And eventually the... The color around the King of Feathers activates, and it goes docile not before taking a chunk out of the dwarf. Did they injure it at all? Yeah, oh. but it wasn't bloodied. The King of Feathers retreats back down the hall. And it is your turn. <laughs> it's our turn. I think during that fight, after seeing Lurch and his brothers all upset would it just be playing with a copper wire and casting message to each one of them and individually he's like to one be like hey, Lurch thinks you're stupid and then just try and start a squabble between the three of them <laughs> <laughs> they start a fight <laughs> uh, may I cast a spell here absolutely we're going to cast Aid. And I think it's three people. Yeah. Would you like me to take a first hit, Kaim? What? Oh, I got this. I can take all the hits in the world. Does Kaim look like his healthy self again? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Between the good berries and the potion, I am. Okay, I got line of sight on you. Okay. I did eight on everybody but Panoply. Okay. The Queen of Thieves looks upon you. Well, my precious made short work of the last group, so that means that if you win against my new pet the deal is complete good luck as I imagine there are many eyes upon you oh boy she says that the portcullis opens and a absolutely horrific looking creature flies through through the door. What? Ew. I can't marbles. believe it. That looks like a beholder. <laughs> Get it? I would like everybody to roll for initiative. Oh, time! Oh, that was guilty. Sorry. I guess <laughs> <laughs> so mean. I am not first, though. Still, that was good for Kai. All right, Gilfie's first. Okay. Um. Barely make it. Uh, Gilfie will fly at it and use the help action on Panoply, and then bug off. Oh man, it's dead. Okay, it will use its one legendary action 
Oh fuck. Oh no. And, what? Um, what is that? See that? There's six targets. Oh, oh boy. God. I'm not a target. Oh boy. That's still a big number. Oh boy. So that's time. What? Okay, that's good. And roll again. Is it good? Is it, really, is it a wisdom save? This kind of seems like color spray. Oh, oh, I could do this. Okay. A beam of neon green flies toward Kaim. Kaim, you are paralyzed. Arvin, it was your turn. What? No. Um. Paralyze the echo, I think. Just Did you? really quick looking up at counter charm is for frightened and charmed. Okay, not paralyzed. Okay, we are going to use. Dissonant Whispers on whatever the hell that thing is. Great roll. And a Bardic Inspiration on Animally. And my turn is done. Turkstein, this is your turn. Well, it seems like it had a big wisdom modifier. Let's hope its intelligence modifier isn't as high. Do we have anything that can help Kaim? That was a lot of crickets. Sorry. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Like, potions okay. don't help that, right? No, but that that spell will help, potentially. Yeah. That was a very good use of that spell. Good roll. Yes. Uh, I'm going to back up. <laughs> End my turn. Run away! Panoply, it is your turn. My turn? Guess, guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Mm -hmm. Market? It would have been, like, enough time would have passed I have to recast it, right? Correct. Okay, I did. Good. And then... Shoot it. I... Try to ambush it. Nice. And I'm gonna shoot it. It's a lot of damage. Hey, let's get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And then I notice it's roaring in pain. I'm like, oh shit. And I might hide behind that pillar a little. I'm done. Okay. Kaim is your turn. You are paralyzed. So, the target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns. Come on, don't do a normal roll. Do a good roll. So, my echo could still attack, though. So that's okay. Um, I think so. Paralyzed creature is incapacitated and can't move. Well, I mean, I could attack while paralyzed, right? 
Uh, no. Incapacitated creatures can't take actions or reactions. So, if, would the Echo be able to go since it's an action for him? The Echo, I believe, can move because I don't think that's an anything for you, but you can't take any actions. Uh. Man, I really don't want to use this potion now. I can't. I can't do it because I'm. Never mind. Uh. I will just have my echo move thirty feet. Those are the actual noises this creature makes. It's a pretty cool soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, it is. How far right. off the ground is it? Uh, it's only like five feet off the ground at the moment. It's just like hovering. Uh, Kaim, you can make another concentration, uh, constitution saving throw. Fun. Mm, no. Ah. Oh. Alright, the eye drake is going to shoot lasers out of its eyes. Oh, well, you know. So, so it gets like 20 attacks? Roll two, five, five. We roll the five. Two, five, six. All right. One laser shoots at Gilfi. Huh? Evasive maneuvers. No. <laughs> Gilfie rolled a two. Sorry, Gilfie. Rip. Two, five, six. The five. Um. But Panoply and Arvin are strategically hiding. So another paralyzing ray goes out against Kaim, but it does nothing. You can't be double paralyzed. However, the six. Is a death ray. <gasps> uh -huh. <gasps> whoa! Whoa! What? I think this is advantage on just thirty throws of paralyzed, You're right? Resistant. You're resistant. Uh, incapacitated creature can't take actions. What is the paralyzed? Uh, automatically fails. Oh, I automatically fail saving throws. <laughs> that, that's an automatic failure, all right. Um, but it's half. Um, it is right? half. Oh my god, I read that so wrong. So I was like, it did eighty-eight damage. How? No, oh, I I right? failed the thirty. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, the saving throw. Thirty-six of the damage. You only took eighteen because you are resistant to necrotic damage. Oh my god. Yeah. You have worn 36 hit points though, right? I do, I do. Okay. Alright, um... Arvin, your turn. Okay. Um... We're definitely throwing a heal out... on Kaim, and we're gonna use it as a second level spell slot. And Panoply, did you use your Bardic Inspiration? <laughs> yeah, I was scared of not hitting it. Okay, smart. And I'll use my last one. And turn is done. Hey, Turkstein, it's your turn. Um, Distance here. Yeah, I'm still within range. Uh... Same thing, Turxian is going to cast Tasha's Mind Whip on it. Nice roll! Yeah! Fails again? Yeah! Is he so dumb? And then he's going to hide behind a pillar. <laughs> Alright. 
it's going to use its single legendary action to use an eye ray. Oh, oh, death ray again. Shit, oh my Kime. gosh. Death ray on Kime! Automatically oh, succeeds. Oh, well, there's some ones. That's good. That's good too. So I, I fail this. I just make it. Yeah, you can just do the same thing. Negative whatever. Yeah, <laughs> negative 89. So you only take 12. It already halved it for you. Okay, thank you. This is our bait ASMR, you know. Canopy, your <laughs> turn. Jeez, I'm wincing every time Kai is hit. Pop out from behind this little pillar. The 88 and 89 is making me nervous, though. Yeah. And just voice in the sky was trying to have that be your damage i think i was terrified i was like how did it do 88 on 8d6 i mean it wasn't double my health so that, that that's that was a silver lining right there okay and then oh that's right again that's crazy there's no silver lining with death ray <laughs> so i mean you technically wouldn't have died with that right I mean, I would Even be unconscious, but not dead, dead. Oh, that's nuts. Nice shots. Anvil. Nice. Oh, is that it? Oh, no, it's not. <sighs> and I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. And I go behind the pillar again. Okay, Kaim can just collapse on it. Kaim, it's your turn, but you're paralyzed. So basically, you can make your saving throw. I'm going to back oh five God. feet, maybe beta reaction if it still can make one. But, um... Yeah, let's make this safe. Kaim, 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 Kaim. Kaim? <laughs> You're one off. No! <laughs> the eye drake's turn. Bro, you've been tanking so oh, well. God. You've been paralyzed. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, but you did the one thing to it. You look good. You look good. What does mind whip do? Ruins you my can, day. You can Aww. either move, take an action, or a bonus action, but you can only do one of the three. Oh, bro, you're a legend. It unleashes an anti magic breath. Where? Oh. Oh, it just hits me. <gasps> 48. Is that the damage? Yeah. Oh my god! I gotta make this. Oh my god. I don't fail automatically fail con saves, right? Just... You get to make con saves as normal. Dex and strength, thank god. Oh shit, bro. Shit, bro. Wait, do you get advantage on that? Hold on. Okay. Whew. No, I think I failed. That was Do you the get advantage? I don't think so, right? Wait, 60 is a fail, right? Well, there's an 8 in there up top. I don't think I ever... I didn't click that, did I? The 8 was from before, I think. Wasn't it? We can go with your 16. Um... Uh, oh, I, I, like, I still have the window for the Echo. I never clicked it. Let me, um... Does that eat you? So you take damage or like, what, hit, one hit point or something? He'll take 24 as opposed to 48. Oh, I gotcha. So, he's looking rough. However... Does it knock his um, paralyze off? Is that a magic effect? No, but it does dispel Damn. the aid on you. Shit. So, let's see. Aid gone. I think that was just like an extra five hit points. However, the creature is looking horribly hurt and is making all the noises you can hear. Arvin, it was your turn. Do I kill Kaim or try to kill it? Cloak! 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 No, I don't need to use it. I would not remain in view if you're going to heal his ass. Well, I was going to come up and use a potion on him. Well, 
the cloak, you can get me out, I think. No, you're tanking well. You stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> can, I, can I use a potion on him and then back up? Yeah. Okay, we're going to do that. I love it. <laughs> get back up there. You're doing great, Kai. Keep it up. <laughs> can you just pat him on the shoulder and walk back? All right, at the end of your turn, it'll use this one legendary action. To shoot Kai. <laughs> oh. Two. Debilitating ray. Okay, that's not. Oh my god, there's so many dice! Oh, thank goodness. Well, that was pathetic. Hey, look at you made a con save. Turxian, your turn. Alright, uh, Turxian will move out from behind the pillar. He's 80 feet. It's looking rough. Let's have fun with this. Yeah, can you just magic missile him? Oh, fireball. Actually. Wait, does he take fire damage? I don't know, but that's a good point. I totally forgot about that. Uh, Turxian is going to take his wand of magic missiles. And cast smart play magic missile at eighth level. Eighth, this I is the last eight. round, right? So, three for the first one plus another seven, so that's 10d4 plus <laughs> 10. <laughs> okay, just a barrage 10d4. Plus. Huh. 40. I think that did it. Was that every charge in the wand? No, I thought. think the wand has nine charges. You're right. You're right. Yep. You're right. So, yes. As Turxian pulls out his wand and unleashes a barrage of magic missiles upon the eye drake, each missile seems to home in on the individual eye stalks that are on the tips of the creature's wings, and then the last four bolts smash right into the central eye that seems to be inside of its mouth, turning it into a puddle of goo and it crashes to the ground and you just hear the entire crowd cheer and some are not cheering because they just lost a lot of money how does uh queenie look make an insight check <laughs> i feel like she made money no matter what though right yeah but that doesn't mean she's happy. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to roll that. Advantage. Or disadvantage. Do you want me to just roll again single? Yeah. Forget talking at the same time is bad. She's pretty hard to read, but you kind of feel like she's impressed. Ooh. Panoply would like to walk front and center where all these things have died and scoop up some of the dirt with blood on it. Open up that little bag around her neck and drop a few sprinkles of soil, blood stained soil into it. And with that, I think we'll end tonight's episode. Is there a is there a king of feathers tooth on the ground? No. Damn it! Those losers! Make a look in the corpses that he bit! <laughs> Leave a tooth behind. Maybe it's in that guy's leg out there. Hey, I made the table, and it rolled that you guys didn't get to fight it. Dude, 